Welcome to the Pain Points Podcast. We tell the stories of small businesses, the people that run them, and the journey they are on. Our purpose is to gather a new perspective on starting, growing, maturing, and maintaining businesses of all sizes. So grab that cup of coffee, sit back, and join us as we start the conversation. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Sarah Harbuck, and joining me today is Kristen Ellis. Hi. Our very special guest is Barb Havard of the Big Picture Event. Howdy, howdy. Rental and venue. I, I Yeah, I told you I was going to get it wrong. I always do. <laughs> uh, like as soon as I ask, I'm like, oh, I can't remember what she said. Um, so Barb, I hope you're doing good. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Why don't you, you. Um, tell us a little about yourself uh, before we jump into your business? All right, so um, my name is Barbara Havard, but I feel like I'm in trouble when people call me Barbara, so I go by Barb. Um, (laughs) I have uh, lived around this area pretty much most of my life. Um, We moved a lot, but all within this area growing up. Uh, I'm a mother to four children, and I have um, my husband, Josh Havard, who is, I don't have, I guess he has me, but anyway. Um, we have each other. <laughs> yes, we have each other. Um, <laughs> and we've been married almost five years, so we're a blended family. I've had this company for five years this month. Oh, and nice. I've been a photographer for 24 years this year. Um, and I guess that's about it. Well, that's how we know each other. Yeah. Uh, the photography world. The, yeah. Those who have longtime listeners know I used to be a professional photographer. Um, but you started this, uh, I'm guessing your business entails your photography, but it also yes. uh, is a, an event space that people can rent. Yes. And um, all the things that go with that. So tell us a little bit about what made you decide to blend the photography and the event. Yeah, I've never heard of that. That's a really, yeah. yeah so cool um, basically, um, let me start square one. So yeah, growing let's up, do that. square one, <laughs> 1982, cold, walking in the snow. Sure, my mom had me. So um, <laughs> I was um, growing up in my younger years, like one to seven-ish. Um, my upbringing wasn't that great. We didn't really celebrate a lot of things. Um, and so that just wasn't my life. Like, where kids would normally have a birthday party or they would, you know, be excited about Christmas break because of all Santa coming and all that kind of stuff. Like, I knew of it, but that wasn't a big deal at our household. Yeah. Not because of religious reasons or anything. My mom just didn't really do it. Um, and so then I moved in with my sister um, probably a little after seven. And she, um, she was older than me, obviously, and she celebrated everything. A Tuesday, yeah. a Monday, <laughs> you got a good grade. So one extreme. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so um, I had her inspiring uh, me with that, and I had my Aunt Barbara, um, obviously my namesake, who anytime you went to her house, it was an adventure. Whatever you were doing, it was always like a big celebration. And so those two things kind of meshed together. Um, and so I was always – the person that people went to as I got older to help them with events. Like my friends would come and say, oh, Barbara, we want to do something original that doesn't cost a million dollars. And what can we do and what can we use and that kind of thing. So you've just so always been a party planner. Always, always kind of been into it. And yeah. I, I was like in high school, I was called the birthday fairy. People would leave money in my locker <laughs> with whoever's birthday it was. And I would dress up in stupid costumes and stand on the tables and what? sing in the awesome so there and yeah. stuff. And, and <laughs> Just silly stuff like that. So over time, um, that kind of went hand in hand as I was just like the crazy loud girl that would do anything to get a laugh. Almost anything. And and I like to ball on a budget. You know, I like it to look expensive but not cost a lot. And um, being in the photography business, that was always my passion. But I was always in the industry because of that. Mm -hmm. So then fast forward, I go to get married um, to my husband now, and I realized that a lot of things that I was getting were things that I wanted were things I wasn't going to use over and over, mm-hmm. and so I didn't want to purchase them because why am I going to purchase something I'm not going to use over and over? So I got real resourceful with it, 
and then things I did purchase, people were like, oh, well, I'd like to use that for my next thing or, or whatever. And yeah. so in it the midst sort of, of snowballed it, from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I was like, you know what? Um, I think I'm just going to, one of my friends was like, you're really good. You should do this. So the month I decided to get married, I also decided to open up my event planning and rental business. And wow. There's a lot to Here. do all at once. That's a Planet. lot to unpack. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I get bored very easily. Okay. And so people are like, how do you do it all? It's like, because my brain, like I saw a meme about how, like you have all these browsers in your head and they never yes. shut down. I've that seen is that me yeah. all the yeah. time. And so I just have, luckily my husband is like my logic that he like very gently brings me down and says, okay, what can we do now? <laughs> Instead of, you know, 50 million yes. different things in the yes, background. Yes, yes. So you got married and started a business basically within the same month. Yes. Wow. Okay. Why not? <laughs> I mean, sure. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Let's do it. So where did you, where okay. did you pick the name from? My husband actually came up with the name. We don't have COVID, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> just just Allergy. a little on a roll I'm right gonna, there. She's I'm going to have to step away for a second. <laughs> You're good. So um, my um, husband, I was like writing down all these various things like meaningful things that uh, kind of went along with um my journey and all those kind of things and he was like what what are you trying to do and I was like I want everything under one roof and I was like maybe the big top or the one and he was like no that's too cliche and then he was like how about two we circus. keep it simple yeah two circus. yeah yeah and then he was like how about we just keep it simple the big picture and I was like oh you're a genius and then well, there it was and it kind of it kind of has a twofold meeting you know yeah. you've, you've got the you're a photographer yeah. so it's a little on the nose about that but right. then the big picture you're you're stepping back and looking at the whole process, right, right. you know. Right. So people come to you and like, I want you to photograph my event, and I'm going to rent your right. space for the event, and I'm going to rent the things that go towards the party or to decorate or right. Is, so you're a one-stop shop in that way, right? So um, the now I no longer have my venue, but I do have my actual event planning and my okay. rentals, my photo booth, and all the things with it. Um, but unfortunately, um, my venue which was sweet caroline that i had um the city did not like it in its location so that's another story but oh. unfortunately it is no longer but it will come back eventually i just have to find the perfect spot for it oh, no. um, i had not heard that or seen anything about that yeah it was no fun but Aww. we're gonna have to choose joy on that one so yeah. <laughs> we'll find you a better location yes 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 a better location um so i definitely still have um always had in general i i like to find a unique vintage style kind of uh, pieces and revamp them so they have like a classic feel but a pop of color that kind of thing mm -hmm. or um, just resource things of how you maybe recycle them and that kind of stuff and so I always had a collection of that stuff I collect typewriters and old um, cameras and that kind of stuff and from that just kind of grew things that I could rent out already that I had and then I added in glassware um, I have chargers um, I have some linens, tables, chairs, all the things. If I don't have it, I can normally source it out um, or I can create it. We do a lot of custom stuff as well. Wow. That's, wow, more than I expected. <laughs> so you, you know, obviously you've been in the photography world for a while, um, 24 years. You uh, did portrait work uh, and still do. Yes. Did you take any sort of like business tips from your photography days to kind of help you set up this particular business? Or did you like go, you know what, I'm going to have to start, I'm just going to start from the ground up and, and revamp from there? Or did you kind of pull ideas and structures for your business from the past? Um, I learned that just like with photography, the business side is not fun. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to do all the fun, creative things. And it's also, those are the things that everybody gets to see the end product from. And everybody gives you the pat on the back for, but they're not giving you the pat on the back of taking the trash out at night or staying up till four in the morning to make sure everything is perfect for whatever. They don't realize all the moving pieces that are going into it. And honestly, it wants not that I need a pat on the back, but once I got into this event and I was planning other than just my friends, I realized that there were so many moving parts that people didn't realize. And so you had to do the balance of letting people know this is what my value is for you mm -hmm. and this is what um, I bring to the table. And so um, it's not what your Aunt Susie can do for you. So if yeah. you want Aunt Susie to do that for you, that's great. 
um, and that might be your budget and everything, but it, it might not end up where you want it to go. And so having the balance of being in a small town, everybody knows everybody some sort of way, mm-hmm. um, and, oh, yeah. and everybody wants um, a, a discount or everybody's your friend all of a sudden, and they love you and support you so in so many ways, but they also expect they don't realize your value when it comes down to paper so that's been difficult for me because and I have a passion for it and I love doing it and so it's so you have that natural tendency to kind of be a little more lenient than you should be (laughs) yes and so um this probably the last two years I um have made myself um be able to say that no is a complete sentence Mm -hmm. I don't have to give you all my whys of why I can't do this, you know, like I felt like I had to explain, like, I'm not a mean person. I can't, you know, like, yeah. you and, gotta, you gotta make a living too, yeah, you know, like, yeah. yeah. And, and they'll be like, well, Susie would let me use it for what I are. She donated. And, and I do, I make it a point to give back to my community. I think that is huge. And once a month I try to give back. I don't try. I do. I give back to something in the community through yeah. my business. And I, I think that's a huge part, but I unfortunately small businesses can't do that for everything. Yes. And so if I can give my time to something and not necessarily something tangible, but I can give my time, I'm always for that as long as I can work it in and, you know, have time to eat, I sleep, and breathe. One you know? of the challenges <laughs> of being a creative or, you know, in the photography world or anything like that where you, you, provide a service that a lot of people think well just anybody could do it so why are you charging right. so much and so it, it's probably very similar in a business like this where you're event planning people don't necessarily well but it's not really a it's a service so you're not really getting necessarily something tangible in return right. and so there's this weird <sighs> juxtaposition between people who want to want something but they don't necessarily want to pay for it and I've you know been in those shoes right. where you kind of you have to value yourself yes. and put this like persona out there of yes I'm nice and I'm kind and I'm generous but I also this is business this is how I make my living this is how I pay my bills this is how I feed my kids you know so while I would love to do this for free for everybody I am not a self-made millionaire (laughs) so you know I think that's probably one of the, the biggest challenges or struggles or obstacles for any small business especially when you live in a small community you know it's hard to get people to see your worth Yes. Because they think you're your friend and, and, well, you know, as a friend, wouldn't you do this as a discount? You know, I ran into that a lot, right. you know, back in the day. So um, it's nice to see that, you know, you're never alone when yes. <laughs> that's the case. Yes, Everybody yes. gets taken advantage yes, of. Yes, 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 yes. So um, have there been any other things that, you know, uh, have stood out to you in terms of, like, obstacles to overcome or hurdles to jump when it comes to a business like this is there oversaturation in the in the area is there a you know having to keep a very fine line with your pricing how does that work I think um, my biggest challenge so far with this business was um, that most people have their family help them with events around here which is totally fine I, I don't think that's an awful idea and I'm all for that for certain events um, but you will soon learn I think I think some some events you just can't do that with. There is a cost for an amateur. There mm-hmm. is in that. And if you pay them zero, you might get a zero product. You might get an awesome product that works that Aunt Susie and Cousin Becky got you set up. But if you don't level up, if you're trying to level up on something and you're not leveling up with your skill levels, with the people you're bringing into that, I, I think that can be a, a huge issue. And so that's what I've dealt with, with people saying, oh, well, such and such did this. And so this is how we should do it. And this is, I'm going to use this person, but I'll use you for this. And then trying to intermesh an amateur with a professional kind so um yeah that would be tricky and I you know I shot many a wedding over the years uh, (laughs) and they had varying degrees of professionalism in who was running the event or if there was anybody running the event and you know I've seen it on every level and I've seen it where there's been teams of people who work very well together regardless of their experience level and then other times it's been a (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) so you know that's a that's one of those things I would imagine you know when you're planning say 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 a wedding for someone Mm -hmm. which is you know usually a high stress event you know it's this once in a lifetime thing you know all the all the stuff that 
you know, people put on themselves and others when it comes to their wedding day um, and, and having to move with all these, you know, moving parts, you know, the photographers, the caterers, the bakers, the, right. you know, the music people. Um, how is juggling something like that on your end? So I think the first thing that I do is when I consult with a client, I say, how how much do you want me in this? Am I taking the whole thing and running? Because that's a or, different yes, price point. <laughs> yeah, that too. But uh, I mean, we've got to be on the same page. You can't say here it is, make it happen. And then you've got, you know, and I just make up random names, but Auntie Amanda and Uncle Ed with his new camera and Aunt Lucy who bakes coming and telling me, no, I brought this and we're doing this and move this and move that. Um, if they're going to do that, then we just put that out on the table at, at front. And so you so, get all that out yes, of the way at the beginning. I, I just tell, say, me, tell me who's going to be involved in what. Yes, yes. And <laughs> so good. if anything changes, I need to know. If you do not let me know, then I act like it doesn't exist and I do my thing. And so they can talk to me all they want. And I'm not going to be rude to them, but I'm just going to get done. This is what we, this is our big picture we came up with, you know, and this is what we're going to do. And so just knowing, making sure that we are on the same page and, we know what your vision is and how I'm going to get you there and what needs to be included in that. And if I have to include them in that, that's totally fine. I just need to know that from the beginning. Yeah. And has that been a, has that been an issue? Because, like, you know, when you're – especially with weddings, and that's been my m- biggest experience, is, you know, you have this um, – you have brides that – or grooms uh, or mothers of the bride yes. who have this very specific idea of how things are supposed to go and trying to match all the different opinions together to form this one idea, yes. I would imagine as an event planner is a challenge because I had one small piece of the pie. I was the photographer. Right. And while that that's definitely can be challenging on the wedding day, yeah, yeah. you – not only have the photography aspect of it, but then the planning and everything that leads up to the event. <laughs> so. Yeah, my ultimate goal is to bring a stress-free, even if everything falls apart behind the scenes, that they they don't know, know anything about anything it. about it. That yep. was the best compliment I've ever gotten from a client is that they had no clue that all kind of th- it was my very first wedding that I did in the first year that I had opened this company. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. They had no clue. And the next day, they were told by some family of all the things that went wrong. And they said, we had no clue. They stood up and, like, toasted me. They had, like, a breakfast the next morning. And were like, we had no clue all this stuff went wrong. Right. And I was like, You're not supposed Yay! to. <laughs> That's Yay! what you paid me this for. This is awesome. Like, I felt like I was going to go in a corner and rock. But, yeah. uh, like, nobody knew. And we made it happen. However we have to make it happen, we make it happen. And so just knowing who whose vision I'm bringing. I, there's no way you're bringing 10 people. Million, yeah, yeah, 10 people's visions are not going to work. Yeah. You know, but if I say, what is your vision? And so I grab your vision and I come up with what can I do to make your vision. I'm not trying to bring in what mama wants, what pops wants, what everybody is like. This is your day. Mm -hmm. This is your kid's birthday party. This is your corporate event. This is who's the head honcho here. And who's paying the bill. That's whose opinion I want. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Well, switching gears just a tiny bit. Um, You know, when it comes to a business like this, where, you know, there are several in town, there are other photographers. How did you go about getting your name out there? Is it like a word of mouth with your friends? Have you done a lot of like advertising campaigns on social media? Like give us a little insight into how you've navigated that. Okay, so starting out, I um, originally went to um, Facebook and basically I just kind of checked out the market of how uh, things were going. So I didn't, I my degree is in um communications minor in marketing and so I thought hey I'll probably put this to use finally <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I didn't really work in that but um so I for probably about three or four months before when I came up with the idea I wanted to do this I went online and said hey what are things you cannot find anywhere around here that you want mm-hmm. um Facebook because it I mean I went on Facebook and put these things because Facebook was free. Um, And then I went around, I did old school word of mouth, like the people that I dealt with in the industry normally and that kind of stuff. I said, hey, what are things that you cannot find or are difficult to find or a variation of something? Because there are other rental companies in town. Um, There are other event planners in town. But what can I bring that is different? Mm -hmm. Um, Because if we all come in and we do the exact same thing, then obviously that's not going to work. So um, that was 
pretty much it was just kind of water seeing mouth where the around. hole in the market what the temperature was, was and and what they needed and to then that works stand with out. other people in the industry right right that's good I mean, I feel like that's this particular field definitely benefits from networking with people because if, yes. you know, you're booked for a certain day, but, you know, somebody over here, you can pass yes. clients back and definitely, forth with definitely, each other. Yeah. And, you know, that really creates a lot of community goodwill with the people who are your peers in this particular industry, right. as well as, you know, there's, you know, knowing, you know, having been in the industry, knowing that, you know, there's literally like six weeks a year that all the brides want for their wedding day. Yes, you know? yes, yes. <laughs> So, you know, trying to, like, pass that around or, you know, Christmas time when everybody's having a Christmas party and different companies are having company Christmas parties, you know, not every single, um, you know, event planning place can take all of the business. Right. So, you know, it's it's nice to kind of have that network of people you can, you know, interchange things with. Yeah, so. definitely. And so I think that um, as cliche as it, as it might seem, I, I – th- think unfortunately that some small businesses feel like um or in service industry maybe more so um that you can't be good in your field without going like overshadowing somebody else like saying how how yes. they lack in everything yeah and i've i've never been one to do that i've been in that situation where people have done that to me mm-hmm. and that is never the what i want to do one because that burns your boats of who you're going to be able to network and if you're in a rough spot or you need help with something you don't want to burn those boats secondly you can't go up if you if you need to learn something from somebody or you need them to help you out with something those kind of things um so i never want to be in a situation where i can't reach out and i can't i think there's plenty of room for all of us and if i'm doing my job of my my passion and my job of what i want to do of um getting out the product and the service that I think is valuable to this community and to the client, then um, I think there's no need to put down others to do that. I think everybody has their place of where they can be, and I don't have to say, Betty, oh, Betty Sue couldn't get you what I could get you. Like, I'm not a used, start, used car salesman, you know? Like, I, yeah. I don't I don't have to do that to, to get around. So I think that um, – that's a huge But factor. when you elevate people around you, you elevate yourself, Yes, too. yes. You raise the bar for everybody. Right, right. You know? I, so I never really understood that, let's talk trash about the, you know, my, my peers. Like, what, how, that doesn't get me anywhere. And there, also makes me look trashy. Yeah. There's <laughs> no, yeah, that. there's, n- there's no way that I'm always going to be the best in everything. And there's no way I'm always going to be the worst in everything. So, yeah. like, I, I feel like there's always room to grow. And I, I want people around me who are going to lift me. And I want to be the people who lift others and and share and help you know we all help each other out when the little united front hold hands came by y'all kind of thing going on here i'm yeah. all about it yeah <laughs> we have got all the noise distractions in the background today guys <laughs> i am so sorry uh, had the i train. apologize well no not so much you're coughing because that's just a, that's a normal human response but like the train the dog is going crazy today. welcome to lufkin yeah i apologize yeah, yeah, I mean, I, i'm very sorry i the cedar pollen that came in on that last little cold front has we did cpr on her killing me now. yeah <laughs> killing me we got a ventilator in the back yeah. took her up real yeah. quick. wow i just thought i'd take a just a pause out of the interview to you know just completely point out the obvious that's going on <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> No, it's not, it's not just you. It's just like literally everything happened at one time. I was like, poor, poor Barbara. She's like having to talk over all this stuff going it's on. It's fine. I'm loud. Oh, it's fine. Um, running a business, uh, you know, I feel like teaches us things about ourselves that, you know, we might not have. It definitely tests you in yes, ways that you've never been tested before. It, it, definitely, it definitely highlights areas of your life. Right. In certain mm-hmm. ways. So, you know, is there anything you want to share with us and the listeners that, you know, what has the business taught you about yourself? You know, h- how you work and how you view things? And um, I would say that my strength is that I, as cliche as it sounds, I have a heart for it. And I think that goes a long way for having a passion for something. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because um, I want to give that experience that, like I said at the beginning, growing up, I didn't, my youngest years, I guess is how you would say it, I didn't have the greatest upbringing, unfortunately. And so um, the basic birthday parties, Christmas, weddings, baby showers, all those things just were so foreign to me. Like I mm-hmm. knew of them, but I didn't know the joy that came with You had with not those. personally experienced Yeah, yeah. And, and so I didn't know that. And so 
you know, just the simplest thing of when my sister would, you know, put a note with some stickers in my um, lunch kit or whatever, yeah. or she would pick me up early to go get ice cream, or she would, you know, those kind of things. A little and, everyday and, celebrations. Yeah, yeah, things that, yeah. That, that, that really instilled in me that I wanted to share that. And so I think that I've learned how much heart I have once I got into this side of the business of that I um, I want what you want. I, wa- I want it's it like and you I want to make you it You have a heart happen. for bringing people joy. Yes, you yes. Know, yeah. And so you found a way to make money at it. Right, is, right. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> right. Brilliant. I, mean, I definitely didn't go into it to make billions and millions here. No, but, I, but yeah. No, no small business ever does. I, yeah. I say that over and over. Um, but I've learned that, yeah, I have, I have a heart for it. And I think this is really a ministry that I, I do as far as, um, you know, this world is crazy and there's so much crap and so much awful happening. Yes, so, yeah. yeah. So we have Blah to focus the on world the, focus that, on the good and, and to yeah. have an occasion to do something yes, like yes, that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, a, you know, we, we tend to focus on the negative things in life. And so having these positive celebratory moments, even if it's just something as simple as a birthday party, you know, focusing our energy on good things like that, yeah. you know, while some people may say, well, that's an unnecessary expense or it's just fluff or whatever, but it can change a person's mindset. It can yes. make their attitude yeah. and just their general overall just day better if yeah. they're enjoying these little things. Well, we only have one life, guys. Everybody <laughs> wants to be celebrated from now, you know, every yes. now and then, you yes. know, so just to have a day or just a couple hours out of a day, anything, you know, yeah. to get to, to be special and to, to, you know, be celebrated and be uplifted. Yeah. Some of you my know. favorite memories, I think, are with my Aunt Barbara with just, she would make the simplest things and she's still that way. She's almost 90 and she just... <laughs> is the greatest anything you do you could be driving to the grocery store and it becomes an adventure with her and when you get in she celebrates (laughs) oh look how beautiful these lemons are look how great this every single thing she is soaking in and whatever you have oh i love your lipstick oh i love the way you laughed at that oh i love she just celebrates everything and everybody and i love that about her and so i hope that um i have just just maybe 25 percent of that in me you know because uh, I, I think there's we just need some joy in the world and so i hope yeah. that that's that's what i bring when i do this that is my mission that is what my heart wants to bring to it and so it's not some people just see it as a list of i check i need six round tables and some chairs um but when I'm bringing those tables and chairs to you, as silly as it might seem, I pray over that. And I say, let these chairs and tables that go, that I put out, even on the worst day when I want to kick those tables over, you know, when I get on there, <laughs> I, we all have those I days. stop and I say, I am so grateful for the people who chose these tables and chairs for me and for the people that are going to sit at these tables and celebrate something today, mm-hmm. whatever that is, if that is a huge wedding or if that is a one year birthday or that is a poker night or whatever yeah, yeah. it is that I am part of bringing that mm-hmm. whatever it is with it even if it's just a rental even if I didn't set the whole thing up yeah I'm so grateful for that and I think um, I learned a lot of that also from um, Brittany Vinson uh, I'm really good friends with and she owns Tomei Catering mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they pray over every meal that goes out. It's huge. Yeah. I, I think um, even if you're not um, religious or spiritual or whatever you want to call it, um, just it's having... It's like speaking positivity yes, out the universe. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Then yeah. I love that, that you give part of yourself to somebody else because we have such a selfish world. So that you can stop and give a piece of yourself and say, this is something that brings joy to me and I want to share it. That's huge, and so that's just an ounce of what I want to do. I think that that was one of my favorite things about being a wedding photographer was the, yes, it was a lot of drama sometimes, and yes, it was very stressful, and it was very fast-paced, and you know, you're just one thing after another, checking off the list all day long, but you got to be part of like this couple's most special moment at right. that point in their yeah. life you know right. it was this little slice of what's you know eventually will probably be the fifth most important day of their yes. life after the birth of their yes, children yes. <laughs> but like you know in that moment in time it was like the most special day and you know? nobody I've shot 
nine million weddings. Not really, but yeah. it feels like <laughs> a lot. It. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, wedding, smedding, whatever. But every single one is so different. Yes. Every yeah. single one has something that you're going to get a backstory that why you're there that day. Uh-huh. You're going to hear why these people got together or if, you know, this is, even if it's their fifth marriage, like you're going to learn something yeah. that got these people together. Years you know? before Kristen and I actually ever met, met and became friends, I shot her husband's yeah. cousin's wedding. Yeah. And I remember uh-huh. her and her husband. <laughs> yep. I remember so like. Funny. And hey, years later a- after we became friends, she like sent me uh, some photos of me yeah. and my husband from when she, sh- she was like, this was y'all twerking in 92. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not you're quite that long ago. But, uh, <laughs> I just, I remember they stood out to me because, you know, they were very dress, sharply dressed. It was a themed oh, wedding, cool. a 1920s yeah. yeah. themed yeah. wedding. And um, her hair and makeup, I think, stood out to me because she was just a, a <laughs> guest. Yes. She yes. wasn't a bridesmaid or anything yeah. like that. And they stuck in my mind. And there's little things like that. There were people I have met at all these different weddings that either are part of the bridal party or just a family member or a friend. And sitting down and having, while well, I was having a break, having these amazing conversations yes. with them. Yes. You know? And just like making these little connections with people that you would not have otherwise known. Yes. And, and be, like I said, being a part of these super I special moments. I love those moments. You know? I live yeah. for those moments. Of, of in It was an adrenaline rush. Yes, yes, yes. People <laughs> are neat. like, like I... I have a website, and then it's, it's under construction now to get back up. But a lot of people say, well, you know, you need to do this for your website and your website. But I like the personal touch. I like yeah. to, even if we're texting, I like the personal touch of getting to know your your backstory and what you want this story to be and what is, even if it's just a quick, like I said, you need some shares or whatever. You know, like, I'm not going to take a blood sample from you or anything, but I like to know a little <laughs> bit about it so I can get the Mother's best shares name. for you. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Do like, a background check. Just right, 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 right. Not all like that. But, I mean, I like to have the story with it. I'm such yeah. a... I don't, I don't I know. I think what that's just a people person, it's I think. Yeah. Of, you know, when you have a small business and you live in a small community, that personal touch goes a long way right. to I mean yes yeah, sometimes you just want to get on a website and order the things and right. be done with it but you know sometimes there's that you know having that actual human being talk to right. you and and work it out it, you didn't realize you needed that until right. it, you've had it you know and I've had I've, I've had events especially in this season where I literally don't see the people that yeah. I deal with at all like it's like it's like a backstreet drug deal not that i've ever done one of those but it's like okay you're gonna leave them at this location in this corner and the money will be like it's like one of those or i've been yeah. voted and then the only way is i creep your facebook or i creep your instagram yeah. that i i'm like if that maybe that's them in the profile picture you never know these days you know or yeah. like could i pick them in a lineup probably not yeah. but i mean and some people that's what works for them and and i do that but in general, I like to be kind of part of the process as much as you want me to be. I mean, yeah. if you just want me to drop it off in the corner and go, that's cool. Um, well, and as a small business owner, you're always trying to do better for your client. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's because that way, and if you know your client a little bit better, you know their backstory, you know what they want, right. it's easier for you to give them what they want, and then it's easier for you to, for future clients to use that information. Right. You know, this type of person is going to want some extra blah, 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 blah. You know, so yeah, that's that's fantastic that you you want to take that <laughs> that thing. Oh my gosh! What is going on? I took a drink did of you, water and it went down the wrong Did you breathe it? <laughs> I think so. Barbara, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I Megan is about to y'all. lose her mind. <laughs> I sprayed the ball with Lysol. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> 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 Yeah, hey, we oh, leave God. all of this in there because I want people to, I want you, I'm pulling back the curtain right now. This is how crazy it can be sometimes. Oh. We're all a hot mess. It's a Monday. Yeah. Yep. Oh, boy, this y'all. Goes. <laughs> Don't breathe your water in. Drink no. it. No. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. So. It's fine. We just keep it rolling. We're good. Uh, I, love, I love how it didn't even phase you. You're just like, kept on going. It's cool. Okay. I love that. Um, well, you brought up an interesting point, and I wanted to segue into that. You know, 2020 was an interesting year yes. for a lot of us, and uh, the event and wedding industry got hit hard. Yes. So how did that affect you guys, and how did you kind of overcome Wowzer. <laughs> okay, that's my word. For so um, when, I, when you go into any small business, you have to have an element of faith in it, whatever mm-hmm. that is for you. 
And um, so when I went into this business, I prayed, let me do this for as many seasons as it is to be in my life. And going into that, I didn't know, would that be three months or would that be 20 years? I yeah. would hope that it would, but I mean, yeah. let's see what happens. Yeah. And so um, since I've been one to try and do many things, I was okay to go in it. But as m more years went by, I kind of got more hard into it, you know, and I was like, um, I really love this and I you, wanted to go. Yeah. And then 2020 happened and you just had to pivot. You had to pivot and you had to do what needed to be done. That has, and been, you had that has to, been the word. Yeah. <laughs> like so many people we've interviewed, you got to pivot. You got to pivot. That has been the word. You got to cha-cha. You, know. you got to <laughs> around, around the box, in the box, in in the side corner of the box. Yeah. Whatever yeah. needs to be done Figure to it make out. it happen. Flip upside down. Yes. 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 Whatever. Stand on your head. Yes. Butter point, yourself up. Point north with your tongue yes. sticking out. Because, you know, you five know. years in business, that's about when a small business starts to hit its stride. Right. It starts yeah. to, you know, kind of, and, and then you have this huge hiccup that no one in the world planned on right. <laughs> and you know then you're like okay what do I do now because you know it's it's a little hard to have socially distance events yeah you know as try yeah. as you might it's pretty hard yeah. so I went in pretty positive mm -hmm. when this happened if you look um on my page I think we might have just changed it but I kept pinned at the top of my page and on my website and stuff for the most part um this whole kind of pour my heart out like it's just a season y'all guys it's gonna be all right I know it sucks right now no baseball season there isn't you know <laughs> I'm sorry you're having to move your weddings around I'm sorry that this prom isn't gonna happen we're gonna make it happen one way or the other rah 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 and I was all for it for about three months I was going strong I was like okay yeah we can reschedule that yes we can do this we can move it it's gonna be great it's fine and then, uh, and that's kind of like my saying. I say that anyway. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. We're gonna, it's gonna fine. We I'm fine. This. It's fine. Everything's it's fine. fine. Yeah. Because um, in my heart, it's fine. It's gonna be fine. And I'm an. What is the acronym in for that though? Fine. <laughs> freaked out. Insecure. Neurotic. And emotional. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so, um, after about three months, I honestly, to be raw and real, I was like wow this is about to tank this, this yeah. is and i've put so much time and effort and heart and um, time away from my family into this and was it worth it was was it yeah what i should have done and, and it was all the fear creeping into me um but every and and income wise it i had went from being literally the best year i had had from just january to march that year to wowzer like people are coming at you because they're upset their events are want, are done or canceled, Being canceled yeah. or having to reschedule out and they want their money back and you can't do I, I i'll speak for myself as my small business i could not afford to give all that back that money was gone mm -hmm. it would have mm -hmm. been spent and put half into the business and half into my life and to my kids and yeah. to that kind of stuff and so I didn't want people mad at me, and so I had to figure out how to – I didn't want my business to have a bad rep, and I had to figure out the non-fun business part of what can work for both of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do that for a lot of people. Um, and there's a couple people you just can't make happy. And right, yeah. I was yeah. raw and real and just said with my heart, I'm, I'll am i do the best I can do, um, but I have to keep what I have to keep to keep afloat. And so – I was very fortunate that every month when I thought, whew, how am I going to make it this month, something came about and was provided. And it might have been 50% of the income that I thought that I was going to get that month for a business plan throw out the window. But, you know, <laughs> but because I was like all adulting and had like, oh, I'm doing so well this year. It's like in January, I sat down like an adult of 2020. It was like, I've been doing so great for these three years. Year four, here we go. We're trucking. I'm going to do this adult thing and make this business plan this year. And here we go. And it was going so great. And an instant, as in life does, yep. it flipped and threw me on my rear. And it, it was, what do I do? And how is this going to work for everybody? And I was just blessed. I say it over and over again that I know it sounds corny, but I mean, literally chills on me because of every month it just happened i was provided and whatever i needed yeah. it worked itself out and i was able to provide for my clients which was huge and people who would say 
you know, thank you for working with us and we can do this now, but we can't do this. Or we want it, this huge thing, but now we can only do 25 people or we can do, yeah. and and thank you for making it work. We're, we're going to do it next year, but can you move around? And as much as I could, and thankfully I was able for probably 80 to 90, I don't know, I'd say 80%. I was able to reschedule everything yeah. and make That's it good. work. That's awesome. Um, but to just know that I'm human, they're human, yeah. 2020, who knows, 2021, who the heck knows? <laughs> yeah, but to, There's no plan. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, yeah, they say you make plans and God laughs. So yeah, here, yeah. here I am and I just do the best I can do and I let people know. I think that was a lesson kind of going back to – uh, that I learned 2020 taught me that um, I'm not a machine yeah and yeah. I am a person and I I had this kind of as an event planner you don't let anybody know anything's wrong or anything's going bad and I'm a positive person in general but I had to g- get raw and real to say hey people I am only a person and yeah. I have a husband and I have four children and they keep wanting to eat every day. And, like, <laughs> like, and they, you know, we got to keep this electricity on. Yeah, and, yep. and, and I mean, then, that's a, that's an example yeah. of that we all, I think, have struggled with, with like that toxic positivity where you just, you know, oh, I'm just so, you know, everything's going to be great to the point where it's actually almost detrimental to you. Sometimes right? you have to yeah. spe- step back and go. I can't do okay. everything. Yeah, yeah. And I can't juggle all these things. And I need to. I need to stop for just a minute because it's been hard. And right. I need a breath. You know. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. so I think I was just in a professional, as I mean, I'm in positive way, but realistic. I yeah. said, "This is what I can do. This is where yeah. we're at. This is where I'm at in my business wise." And I know it's not your fault Rona came around. Sure. And yeah. I know that you're doing what you think is best for you, and I'm going to do what's best for me, and hopefully we can work that out, and and let's do this, well, you know? <laughs> I'm curious, you know, with all of that shifting around and people wanting their money back, did any any of that kind of make you reevaluate your policies, yes. your contracts, yes. things like that that you can, you know, impart to our listeners who might have yes, a small check. business? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> all the things. What, did, what, what was, um, like, the biggest thing that you were like, oh, I really the, need to address that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I had one particular client um, who had a rental who, um, instead of just paying their um, – deposit down they uh, this was one week before we got shut down on rona okay they were going to have it that following weekend the event and so they they said in good faith they had been referred to me by somebody who uses me all the time they rented my photo booth and they paid the entire amount um for the event um signed the contract didn't just pay the deposit they paid they paid all of Mm -hmm. it up front um, and then they um, signed the contract, and then when this happened, they messaged and said, we're canceling the event, we're not doing it at all, and this is where I would like my money to be sent. And I said, I'm so sorry, that's not going to happen. Um, yeah. And, you know, I will keep the retainer, and yes, I will give you that back. And um, they were not for that, unfortunately. Um, and so it nice. was a sticky situation of a a loyal customer client friend who had referred somebody to me who thought because because that person was in the mix i would give it back yeah so i had to know that every everybody gets a contract which that person had a contract but you're not going off of who refers you what happened yeah that person said oh yeah she'll give it back yeah and so (laughs) no it was a yeah it was a sticky situation and i got what they were saying because they said we literally just paid you yeah i get that but those bills just keep coming you know (laughs) (laughs) they and so it's uh, it's nothing personal i'm not trying to take your money and run and i will give you a credit and you can use this service any other time and we can work this for a smaller group I mean, you have a credit for two years. We can do something. We can use it on different types. I gave all the options I could give. Um, and they really were pretty rough on my business Ooh. and on social media. Yeah. Um, and But that's – I've only had two 
out of my five years that, uh, of things that have happened like that. So yeah. I think I'm blessed in that situation. It yeah. was a lesson. I just learned. Those hard lessons teach yes. you. Yeah. Oh, boy. That, I messed up here. I need to do this um, better in the future. My my wording in one of my contracts needed to be a little bit more blunt mm-hmm. um, with it. And so I just went and kind of fixed that in um, and made sure that it's not just a sign situation. I actually now will skype facetime phone call we're going to talk over this even if we're just doing it through email i need you to understand what i'm saying and i think is understood yeah. is really on this paper and you understand it and um so the non every, every receipt that i gave yes. for any payment your retainer is non-refundable yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was said many times throughout the process yes. yeah. and they 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 don't understand that because the people want there to be a loophole and i wish yeah. there was a loophole but i it's there's not yeah. <laughs> so yeah. There's, yeah there and and so it's a process of sticking to your guns which hurts sometimes yeah. and, it, and you think easy. you get backed in a corner where you think do i just do what they want but if you do then you do you do that and for you do it everybody else. yeah, yeah. It's a real and, slippery slope. Mm-hmm. and i don't want my client my loyal client who referred them to kind of like when you rave about this Mexican restaurant, how great it is and wonderful it is, and you take your friend to it, and that sucks that night, and the server sucks, and everything sucks. You yeah. don't want to be that person to who they referred. Right. Yeah. So I just had to say, God, this is my character, and this is what I do. And, I mean, they have to see that for what they see and choose. And I know who I am, and I can't lose sleep over somebody else's opinion. It's none of my business. You know, like, that's yeah. hard hard when it comes down to the core or sometimes you you have to make that payment back and and you just you go you eat at that particular yeah. time but then you go back okay here's my contract right. all right where are you redoing this and it's right. a big bold yeah. letters and yeah. red yes. <laughs> with a neon sign yeah right. yeah and so well, i think you, know, you just can't no matter even whether it's business or just life in general you can't make everybody happy some yeah. people right. are gonna you know and and like you said sometimes you just gotta you gotta be a duck you gotta let just right. let it <laughs> Right. Let it roll off your back. Right. It's yeah. not, you know, it's, not personal. It, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not always easy to do, but yeah. yeah. What is so? Is 2021 looking a little more positive then? <laughs> so, um, 2021. Um, what I miss the most, which we haven't really talked about, but I'll just kind of touch on, no, it, go is, for it. Um, my murder mystery dinners that I did <gasps> was huge. I love them. Oh, so um, fun! And um, so last year, obviously, we had three of those that were set to go in 2020 those didn't get to happen um and um so i really miss that for that was something that the community could do we always sold out at them and they're a lot of fun because we have everything from you know teachers who just want something to do on the side to actors you know like who yeah, really yeah. they eat breathe you know this kind of stuff um and so i get to get these fun ideas all these crazy stories out of my head and i get somebody to write a script for it and then the community gets to come and see it and they're always so much fun and i had so many people still saying when are they coming back when are they coming That's back so, cool. so is that a 2021 yeah. thing yes and so 2021 <laughs> we have still the three from last year and i have another one we're working on and awesome. I, I hold. we're gonna have to go do that yes yeah, oh yeah, yes totally. ladies Absolutely. oh they're so much fun um and so you get dinner um and then you get to see it's kind of like a dinner theater in front of you and there'll be people who will be seated at the table so you won't even know might be a suspect or like it, it's really cool how it works yeah, um, nice. it's great it's about two two and a half hour thing and they have themes and so we've done a 1980s prom we've done um a 1920s obviously we've done that a couple of times we've done a magician one we've done circus we've done um 1950s That's we've awesome. done seven or eight of them anyway but i miss that element of being able to put on the events but i haven't been able to pivot in that situation to figure out how do you balance it how do you do that safely yeah safely and financially how do you do it sell enough tickets to cover everybody and and all the things with it so i'm hoping in 2021 that that is um something that can come back around i think uh 2021 we're booking events they're just smaller events so that's Mm -hmm. good yeah um and a lot um, of outdoor events i would imagine yes outdoor yeah um smaller the dinner theater thing could be outside yes and so we've actually thought about that um the thing is is that weather wise you never know it's hard to know yeah um how it happens and so um what would be our backup for that um but yes that's definitely something that's grinding in my head here um 
but in general, like I said, um, I've really, I, I can't really think of the word I'm trying to say, but I've had a refresh of, yeah. yes, I'm going to be okay, and that we can go on and continue this, because there were, you know, times where, like I said, three, four months after Rona came on in, that I thought, am I going to make it another time, and is this just a season, and that is heartbreaking to me, but can I move on? And there was always something to come back and I can't even think of the word I'm trying to say, but whatever. Something's yeah. always like, I, know, I know what you mean. To say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. stamp, go, go forward, you know, yeah. stamp, go forward. And so sometimes I have to, you know, cheerlead myself. Um, but in the same thing, it's so easy. I can be the biggest cheerleader for everybody else. But and 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 about a situation, mm-hmm. but when you're walking through the fire, when you're trudging yeah. through the mud, yeah, it's hard. That is part of a small business that yeah. you've got to, you know, especially when it's just you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have to lean in and say, "How are we going to do this? And is is it worth it? Is it is it is it what I went in set in? Is my mission still happening? Am I still doing what I came in to do?" And I'm not just going through the motions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Am I not just trying to? Because income, yes, that sucks when that goes away. But is there a way that you can bring that in another way that is going to be valuable to other people and yourself as well? And and not just you going through the motions because that never helps in the end. You're not never going to make enough money. You're never going to make enough people happy if that's all you're doing is going through the motions. You yeah, know? definitely. Well, I mean, that kind of can leads into one of the last questions is, is what would you, what advice do you have for anybody who might be starting a similar business or just an entrepreneur in general, a small business owner that you learned or that you were given when you were starting out that was really helpful? I think to know, know your worth, obviously, mm-hmm. and that is always, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people say that, um, to, to know um, what your mission is. Just like when I meet with clients and I say, hey, what is your mission? What is your vision? Where are you going? Um, I, When I went into it, I had to know what what is my mission and how do I continue that going? And does that mean I have to grow out or do I have to tuck in? Yeah. Do I have yeah. to? Maybe I, I have these services, but they're not doing anything except taking up space and on a page for you to click. So I take those away because they're not really doing anything. And I, I do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say, hey, this year, Stream no, the business. nobody ever really cared about this. And I just thought it you know would look nice for me to add this down here, but nobody wanted that. Or people really love this. What if I, I leveled this up, this experience, or what, you know, because we have yeah. movie nights, inflatable movie nights that people rent out, which are super fun. Yeah. You know, so we add that to, now we've added our pick and play, which is a picnic we set up, like a theme picnic for you, and game night so with it. And so you can do those. How, how do we level that up? I had already been setting up picnics, but how did I level that up? I added games to it. You know, like, yeah, what can yeah. I do that levels it up that, we're all going to benefit from and not that i'm yes i upgrade the package obviously but not hugely i just want to bring another element because people get tired of the same new fresh ideas yes because i I think people know i have a movie night people know that i have the photo booth people know but what is why are you different why do they want me instead of the other person why can't they put their own daggum picnic on the ground like they're like what you got i don't got you know like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 and so you've got to see what are you doing that is what valuable, valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah value you're bringing to somebody with else. it so, so think, know your own value know your mission and then know what value you're bringing to, to the community to, like yeah. always be valuable to your community and the people around you and be willing to um to learn don't go in thinking you know everything mm. and and that I mean, I've been in photography 24 years, and I can't say, I mean, there are things that I do in Photoshop that take me 10 steps to do that somebody now can go do click in one. Mm-hmm. And so you have to say, well, does my 10 steps help me sleep at night, or is that really the better choice for this? Get over my pride yes. and ask them for yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. How do they do that? <laughs> and so that that situation has happened in, in my photography and also in my event planning, and to know that um, if somebody comes and asks me for something and they have to, you know, that's a huge step for a lot of people to come ask for help yeah. or, or to ask, how do you do something? 
open up and tell them don't think you have a hidden secret because we are in the world where you can find everything on youtube so you are not <laughs> right you, yeah you are not the diamond in the rough like you need to just open up <laughs> real and, talk with barb yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. i love it That's a, barb's babble uh, <laughs> so you just, you just no. have to know that other people are valuable and everybody brings something to the table and and listen listen to others and listen to your community and what they want and what they value and don't take it personal because there have been some ideas that I think are like slam dunk. This is awesome. Oh, this is so cool. And then I put it out there and it's like crickets. And I'm like, hello, did y'all see what I put up? Yeah. <laughs> this is so cool. Y'all don't want this. And it's nothing. And it's, yeah. I can't take it personal. And they're like, did you see this? What if we had this? And then I do it and everybody loves it. And I'm like, the community's been sitting around waiting for me to do this. The dinner theater. No, it, nobody had done that around here. Yeah. yeah. And it came from. When I lived in Austin, I loved going to dinner theaters, but I thought around here people aren't going to pay. I paid $100 for a ticket there. Here they're not going to pay $100 right. for it. Yeah. And I've got four kids and a mama. I'm not paying you $100 to come sit here and eat and a babysitter. and a... So, yeah. you know, figure out, figure out what your temperature is, what your community needs, what you're bringing, and don't just go in thinking you're going to get quick rich because that's not happening. Yeah. No. So no, no. <laughs> that's yeah. a good realistic right. stamp of, at the end there. Yes. <laughs> right. Work hard. You're probably not going to become a millionaire, but you're going to love what you do. Yeah. You ground ground yourself. Keep a good tribe around you, and know that support system um, is incredibly yes, important. Huge. Yeah. My husband. I say I say it all the time. It's a family business, whether my kids and my husband want it or not. Like this is, <laughs> and so my husband has no clue how to do a centerpiece or whatever but if i tell him where i want to flower what he will do his dangdest to get it there and he's <laughs> might be the muscle my 11 year old son is my biggest helper he will build move shift anything he has to do my three teenage girls will roll their eyes all day at me <laughs> but at the end of the day they are like when their friends are talking about it then it's cool you know or yeah. the photo booths at the event oh that's my mom over there all of a sudden yeah, I, you know yeah. i can be recognized but they in the end of the day they it's all part of it. and i think that's something that you can teach your family i'm teaching my kids worth ethic but also giving back to your community yeah. um knowing that it's it's all faith you have to put I'm, I'm putting faith in myself and i'm putting faith in god that he is going to be with me through this no matter how many times i screw up if it's meant to be it's going to work itself out and if it's not hey that that was a season and we got value out of when we got so many great things and experiences and help people and there were some sucky moments but they were lessons and here we go move on to the next thing like you just <laughs> I think that's fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah, perfect. So. Yeah, what a great way to wrap it up. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, tell everybody where they can find you online <laughs> okay. so they can hire you for some stuff. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. Okay, so um, I am Barbara Havard, and I have the Big Picture Event Planning and Rentals. I'm on all the socials, including TikTok. Don't cringe, y'all. I am there. <laughs> um, so, uh, hey, it's the new happen in social right. media. So. I haven't figured out reels yet, but I mean, I know what it is, not figured it out, but I haven't venture there yet but that's on the to-do list so y'all yeah. wait up it's happening <laughs> um but all the socials i'm on so facebook um is where most people go the big picture event planning and rentals it is a mouthful but worth it i promise um my um cell is 936-212-5206 so you can text call me or my email um is tbp events uh, lufkin at gmail.com um, so you can go to those and once you go to any of my socials it has my web page and everything on it it's getting revamped right now it's kind of long so you can just click on that <laughs> um, and I will get with you or I have a, a great assistant her name is Caroline which is so funny um, because that was my grandmother's name and so she has been a Aww. godsend she um, she helps me and so uh, one of us will be clicking and talking to you and um, just set up for whatever you need, whether it's some tables and chairs or glassware or photo booths or backdrops or all the things, whatever, all custom signs, chalkboards, koozies, all that we do all the things. Then one stop shop, guys. Yes. Yeah. We got you. The big picture. Photography, for real. everything. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> we everything. create, you celebrate. That's our slogan. That, that is fantastic. awesome. I love yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. Awesome. Well, Barbara, thank you so much for dropping by and talking with us today yes. and telling Thanks us so all much about for it. having me. Meet you. you were delightful. They I didn't everybody... throw anything at me. I told them if I ramble to throw something at me. So <laughs> I know you oh, did good. Did. You did good. Mm. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Thanks for listening in. We uh, we hope you uh, tune in next.
next time for the next guest that we have in the next adventure. Thanks, guys. We'll see have you next a, time. Have a Thank good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Do you have a story to tell? We want to hear it. If you'd like to be a guest on our podcast and share your story, contact us on our website at painpoints.com or any of the social media linked on our website. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on either Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. We'd appreciate a review, a like, or a comment to let us know what you think. You can find all of our podcasts linked on our website under the podcast tab. Once again, thanks for joining us, and we want to wish everybody a wonderful day.